Well, welcome to the September quarter economic and uh, investment committee update for FMD Financial. I'd like to welcome Richard Dahl, the chair of the investment committee, and Michael Reynolds, an IC committee member and director of FMD. Thanks for joining me again this quarter. Um, this is the uh, more hirsute, uh, hairy uh, version of the uh, presentation. We're all in lockdown here in Melbourne and a bit overdue for a haircut, and I'm not shaving till we get back in the office. Thanks, okay. Blake. <laughs> Thank you. To, to kick off, why don't the budget was this week, so why don't we have a little look at um, what was um, the, the budget that was? Mike. What was this budget trying to achieve, do you think? I think the federal government is really focused on a number of things. The first is clearly trying to get everyone that has had, had their jobs uh, displaced or completely lost their jobs, provide an environment where there is the most opportunities for those businesses to get back on their feet and re-employ. Um, and that's been done in lots of different ways, um, including, uh, you know, substantial changes to the instant tax write-off for, for, for assets and uh, particularly for small business. Um, effectively, you can offer um, write off a $150,000 purchase and for small business that includes second-hand items, um, which is, a, you know, a significant change in the depreciation rules. Uh, they've bought in uh, significant personal tax cuts, which, which were basically brought forward um, from uh, effectively a future event, backdated to the 1st of July, which will basically mean that all um, people that are employed will have a, a meaningful reduction in uh, their personal tax liabilities. And What's that? A couple of thousand dollars in our, each in our pockets, I think. Yeah, so effectively they've changed the thresholds um, in that you know, the first two stages where they've increased the personal tax levels from $37,500 to $45,000 for the 19% uh, uh, tax rate and effectively um, from $45,000 th through to $120,000 is the second tax rate at 32.5. So that's a meaningful change to middle income Australia and uh, and, and that that is designed to encourage people that um, that have that have got extra dollars in the pocket to spend. That spend will flow through to the economy, help employment, and help businesses get past this uh, pretty treacherous time that we've all been through. So, Richard, it's really a, a recovery focused budget, and and some of the other the most of the measures really appear to be directed towards business recovery. What are your thoughts on on those measures? Yeah, correct. The federal government is definitely saying that um, to get people back into work and um, um, more into uh, more employment hours, start with business, stimulate business, give business the tax breaks, give business the tax credits that they can utilise um, and get themselves in a position to be employing people more. So it's definitely focused on, on business leap and giving giving business those incentives to get employment driving. So the unemployment rate, it hadn't fallen to as bad as maybe what we thought talked about last time, but it's certainly this is a drive to get the unemployment rate um, in the positive in the future. Yeah. The, the government's so, also introduced uh, some jo job subsidies for, you know, younger workforces. Uh, so people between uh, 30 and 35 years of age, there's physical dollar um, dollar substitutes to businesses to encourage people to employ. Um, $200 a week for people under 30 and $100 a week for people between 30 and 35. So that's a meaningful um, addition to cash flows for business to encourage re-employment. And, and of course, our clients are going to, many of our clients are going to receive a little bit more money from the government uh, in the way of the um, uh, $250 payments uh, coming up this year and next year. Uh, for those people in receipt of age pension, Commonwealth Seniors Card and carer payments and other, other benefits, Lee. Yeah, so, so I think if I reflect, I think it's a, the view is it's a, it's a very much a, a, a budget that's got some stimulus in it, get people spending now, but also some really important recovery factors to help business get back on their feet and start employing people and, and, and investing to grow, which I think's what we can hope for in this environment. But it's going to cost a lot. It's going to cost a real lot. And so um, 
the the forward estimates suggest that gross debt to borrowings GDP is going to get somewhere around 35%, which is a record high for Australia. Uh, Mike, should we be worried about that? Well, I think in isolation, um, the Liberal government here has always espoused governments not running to significant uh, debt levels, and, and they've always espoused the virtues of their uh, budget surpluses. Um, the pandemic's basically thrown that completely out the window, and we have a long road ahead for that uh, to get back to a balanced budget. On a world basis, um, our debt to GDP ratio is you know, pretty much the envy of the world. You know, most European countries uh, have jet to be jet, sorry, debt to GDP ratios well in excess of their total economy, more than 100%. The US is heading towards uh, 150%. Um, so the, the printing of money by governments to provide an economic stimulus and backdrop for economies to recover is absolutely the right thing to do. Uh, in addition to that, what central banks, which is the independent arm of the government have done is they've materially focused on bringing down the cost of debt across the whole curve. Here in Australia, the Reserve Bank is focused on uh, delivering a very targeted rate of uh, interest rate deduction, uh, reduction to that two and three year curve. And that in itself significantly helps the cost of government borrowings. And another thing that it also does is it provides a window where our normal retail banks, ANZ, Westpac, CBA, can access cheap finance through the Reserve Bank. So their cost of funding is much lower than normal, which has allowed their cost of interest rates for mortgage and home borrowers to come down. And that means that uh, we've got a, a, a significant reduction of cost for, for debt servicing across the globe. And, uh, and that in is the reason why um, we don't believe that it's necessarily something we need to focus on today. The government said we'll deal with the pandemic first and we'll deal with the debt at a later point. Thanks, Mike. And I think that's that's right. So we we deal with the we'll, we'll get the economy going and, and growing the economy will enable us to pay back the debt over time. Yeah. And was there anything you'd like to add to that, Richard? Yeah, I mean, that's the last point, Lee, to say the government believes when you when we get productivity happening, you get a productive economy. You'll grow yourself, um, grow grow yourself through that debt. There might be some inflation eventually comes, and and that also helps with debt erosion in the long term. So as Mike says, deal with the pandemic at the moment, get the economy going, and then deal with the debt. And we're lucky we've got a very productive economy to be able to do so. Yeah. So I think, I think we're well positioned in comparison to many economies and so we're not overly concerned about that debt. So, all right, well, thank you for the quick update on the budget. What we might do now, Richard, and I might come back to you if I may, is to just ask you to have a, a little reflection on the last quarter of investment markets and, um, and what's happened there, what have you seen? Okay, Lee, what, what we have seen is um, probably not quite as much activity as we'd seen in the quarter before. Um, when markets were, were certainly moving uh, a lot of momentum in different directions. Uh, but the last quarter, the September quarter, is it's been one of um, uh, range trading in the, in the global share markets. Um, and where we started, where we finished up wasn't, wasn't too different, albeit along the way there's some different things that have happened in the market. There's some stocks which have really, really rallied. The um, the big technology stocks have rallied through their continued rally until September. And it's finally in September we saw a bit of a pause. Um, but many of the other cyclical stocks are still at you know, low points where they've been for some time. So the, so the FMD Investment Committee um, has been in a period of uh, a lot of reflection over when the future will come, when the markets will rally again, what will be the impetus for that? But the September quarter um, has been a lot of sideways trading and, and much the same when we look at currency as well. Um, through that quarter, or well, the previous quarter, we had the Australian dollar really strengthened and our hedge position helped us. But through the September quarter, the US dollar um, appreciated uh, through that quarter, so the Aussie was a bit, a little bit weaker. So it was a, a little bit of a, yeah, a, a quarter of not a lot of movement, but uh, certainly a lot of interest in what was happening. 
Yeah, and I think if I can just pick up, Richard, on your, your point about the the US, I mean, most of the movement in the S&P 500 has been five stocks, yeah? Correct. Those, those stocks dominate and there's a whole lot more that have not moved. And, uh, and that's certainly um, uh, why our strategies in our portfolio, while there's certainly been a bit more tilt to growth in more recent times, we certainly still have uh, value managers with with cyclical stocks, which will hopefully see some rebound in the future, Lee. And talking about rebounds, Mike, the, the banks have recently rebounded in Australia? Re- really only in the last few days. Um, post-budget, to be honest, uh, if you look at um, if you look at the All Ordinaries Index uh, to the end of September, so the three months to the end of September, um, the total return, including dividends, the Australian market was down 0.06 of 1%. So virtually virtually flat line for that same period of time. And post-budget, we're up at 200 points. So you call that 3 or 4% in the last few days. And a lot of that has been um, a bit of a, a recovery, a, a bounce off very, very sold off positions in our financials and the banking sector. And that I think is partly um, as a result of the budget. Um, a lot of banks had provisioned significantly more distressed and doubtful debts for people not being able to return to pay their mortgage. And I think the um, statistics are maybe not appearing to be quite as bad or less bad, if, um, if that's the right word, um, than what, um, what uh, was forecast. And so we've seen the, fo- the four major banks all up about 10% the last few trading days. Um, interestingly, from a statistical point of view, um, the financial sector, uh, which is um, uh, you know a sector of the market is down 23% on calendar year for the market. Uh, so that is from the 1st of January through to the end of September. So the financials are down 23% as an index, um, yet the ASX 300, which is the total market, is down 10% for the same corresponding period. So it just shows you, you know, the two sectors of the market that have really struggled is energy and financials. You know, energy is down 42% calendar year, um, and that's just a, a, a destruction of demand. So, you know, I think I think I filled my my petrol tank up in my car once since March, um, and that's just a reflection that I'm not going anywhere uh, and because we're in Victoria. That's what happens to everyone. Um, but financials and and uh, and energy have really um, seen demand destruction uh, for different reasons, and um, uh, and that's been a big contributor to the weakness in in the market. Yeah, but Richard, overall in the quarter from 1 July to the end of September, the markets have been very sideways, yeah? Yeah, they have, like Mike was saying, um, mm-hmm. overall. So what, what is, how does the IC respond in a sideways market? Well, the IC, I get, it's given us uh, a fair bit of time to reflect. I think this whole year has given us a lot of time to reflect on, on what's in the portfolio and and the IC is optimistic. I mean, the IC has been looking at a, believing that um, medical solution vaccine will be coming at some stage. And there's certainly progress we're seeing more recently with um, with that. We'll talk about that in a, in a moment. And on that on that realm, we're looking at sectors where we're saying on a relative valuation basis, what things haven't quite recovered what's going to be, when it does recover, what's going to help the portfolio. And so what we have just uh, implemented, Lee, is a change in one of our growth managers. So we, we haven't changed our value managers. We've looked at our growth managers and we said, look, there are a number of um, growing companies in the, in the Australian share market um, and getting access to those growing companies, we've managed to do that with a fund manager called Hyperion. Hyperion's had a long track record in buying growth stocks, growth stories from companies when they're very small with earnings and reinvesting their earnings to become big companies significant in the ASX. And we've just implemented that exposure um, recently. So um, that certainly augurs well for the future. And we've also been looking at um, the property sector. Uh, um, it was one that sounded very tough, as you can imagine, with retail and commercial property through the shutdowns. Uh, but on a relative value basis, we th- we think that that's relatively attractive to other asset classes, Lee. So um, mm. the IC has certainly been uh, busy looking at the current 
valuation and looking at the future. Thanks, thanks, Richard. So that's and that's I know that Hyperion is one that was uh, closed to new investors for a while, so we've been able to get access to that in this environment. That's that's great news. Now, um, you alluded to it before, Richard, but um, let's look ahead for a moment. What's on the economic outlook roadmap for the next six months and what are the big factors that will influence things? Big one that I've just mentioned a, a while ago is, 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 getting, is getting health treatment, medical treatment for COVID, um, ultimately getting uh, 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 vaccines which uh, have e- efficacy. Um, and so at the moment we're, we're looking very closely and a number of our investment managers are looking closely at the progress of the trials of the vaccines around the world. And yesterday we had a, um, uh, a briefing from one of our investment managers who was looking very closely at what's happening with Pfizer uh, in America, Moderna uh, and AstraZeneca in the, the progress of their vaccines through the Federal Drug Agency. They're getting through towards what they call phase three trials where we're getting close to um, vaccine development. There, a lot of people have been injected with trial vaccines and promisingly there hasn't been um, reactions to those um, to those uh, injections, those trials. So um, with that in mind, the investment committee is reasonably positive that if we can get to vaccines through to 2021, um, then the economy will be dragged along and markets are always forward looking, remember. So when they start seeing some success on the trials and going into vaccines, markets will be rallying. So that's what that's what we're looking for. Right. And Mike, what other things are, is weighing on the markets at the moment? I can think of one in the US perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> well, for those people that have been bored and wanted to be um, entertained, um, the election debates that we've witnessed the last few days um, make our political system here look uh, absolutely stellar, I must say. Uh, so the electoral, uh, the election in the US has clearly been um, uh, a significant event that will, will, will have some effect on investment markets. Um, we've been um, cautious in our uh, decision-making process taking that into account. Um, I think initially markets were concerned that if Biden was successful in being elected, that in, that would ne- not necessarily be a great thing for equity markets because the Democrats in the US um, have a higher taxation uh, regime um, as part of their agenda. But I think in light of the pandemic, um, the market has ease their fears or their fears have been somewhat uh, diminished on uh, Biden being successful and um, the negative impact that some of those uh, policy settings that they have will, will, will um, you know, cause issues. So I, I'm, you know, I'm optimistic that um, uh, whoever is elected, um, I think the market will absorb that outcome. And as Richard said, um, we'll quickly move on post the election and refocus again on the vaccination. And I think one of the things that the committee's um, thought about is that the vaccine and the solution to the pandemic has sort of almost become a political uh, item in its own right. And so um, there's lots and lots of money involved in a successful treatment for COVID. And um, so potentially the FDA, which is uh, what Richard talked about, the regulator for new drugs being uh, made available in the system, um, may want to be a bit cautious in delivering that information so it doesn't affect the political outcome. And so we might see a slight delay in, um, in uh, those, those treatments becoming available. So, um, but having, having said that, we, Richard and I uh, both, both are of the same view that we think there is an optimistic uh, uh, path forward for both vaccines and, uh, and improved treatment. You've seen mortality rates um, progressively come down. So the, the ability, hospitals are better at treating uh, treating patients that are infected. And if we do get a vaccine, I think we'll get a very significant shift in sentiment, which I think is a big tick for markets. Um, and that sentiment shift should be very positive for, um, for equity. So I think next year. 
Great. Thanks, Mike. That's a that's a really good um, summary. And, and I think that what I'm personally hoping for is the uh, the uh, the most important chart um, that I'd like to share with everyone, which is the uh, open table restaurants booking chart. Uh, I would like to see the uh, Victorian version um, <laughs> line in that chart get above the line. Um, and um, hopefully what that was isn't too far away either. Before we close, uh, any further comments? Look, I think, Lee, the, the big picture for investors and clients of FMD is the investment committee continues to look at all investment options that are available in the marketplace, both from a defensive point of view and a and a uh, optimistic, you know, from a growth point of view. And um, although we are optimistic about the future in terms of economic recovery, uh, potentially next year on on the medical side of things, we still have levers within our portfolios that are defensive in nature that will still aim to protect the portfolio if our optimism is not proven to be accurate. So it's not a decision that we're going to say we're all in the share market and we're out of all the defensive assets. We will manage those adjustments uh, sensibly and um, and that's what the role of the investment committee continues to be. Diversification remains the key, Richard. It is. I mean, that's the, uh, that's, we work closely with our investment consultants and they'll always look at the objectives of the portfolio. Um, and making sure the risk-adjusted outcomes we get can protect us when we get shocks like we did earlier this year, Lee. And um, so when we make these decisions, like like Mike said, they are generally tilts in a in a direction and um, um, adding value in that way. But making sure we are always steadfastly looking at the objectives of all our clients. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, Mike. That sounds like a great per point to end this uh, summary on. Thank you very much for your contributions. I look forward to uh, joining you in January, potentially face to face. Um, let's hope there is a, a vaccine and a, uh, a clear result in the US election. And, uh, um, and hopefully without a beard. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure about the US election, but uh, let's see. I don't mind, I just want a clear result. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much uh, and uh, join again soon. Thanks. No worries at all. Thanks, Lee. Good, guys.